What's up, everybody? Although we've seen an uptick in buyer activity these past few weeks, I think we may have been given some false hope. As mortgage rates started to drop a little in early February, signs of the market recovering was all the talk. So what happened? Mortgage rates started to rise again, which really put a damper on the market. Potential home buyers paused and activity fell. The latest inflation reports and recent economic data, including strong retail sales and job numbers, suggest it might take longer than than expected for the Federal Reserve to tackle inflation. As a result, rates started to climb again, reaching the highest level since November, which scares a lot of buyers. The somewhat disappointing inflation numbers put a wet blanket on home buyers after less than 6% interest rates lit a fire underneath them a few weeks ago, said Redfin Economics Research Lead Chen Zhao. Inflation is cooling too slowly and the job market and retail are too strong for the Fed to ease up up on interest rate hikes, which means mortgage rates are unlikely to fall much in the next few months. This doesn't necessarily mean that rates are going to soar past 7%, but it does mean that the housing market recovery will remain touch and go until we see inflation and the overall economy improve for a longer duration. In fact, even investors are backing off the market at a higher pace than back in 2008. According to Redfin and in the fourth quarter of 2022, investor home purchases plunged 45.8% compared to the same period the previous year as mortgage rates rose and home prices declined. In 2008, investor purchases fell 45.1%. This may be good news for individuals who just couldn't compete with those cash investors during the housing pandemic boom. So today, we're going to take a look at Redfin's data and see what the signs are moving forward. So let's just dive right in. Even before mortgage rates went up to 6.87% last week, home buyer activity was still pretty low. In fact, mortgage purchase applications last week were down 43% on a year-over-year -year basis. That being said, buyers were still more active than they were last fall. According to Redfin, pending home sales continue to improve. They're down 18% year-over-year, but that's roughly half of the 30 33% decline in November. Redfin agents report that there is a strong demand for move-in ready, well-priced homes in desirable neighborhoods. And I agree. Like I've reported in past videos, where I am, which is DC and right outside of DC, in case you're new to my channel, houses that are priced appropriately and show well are still selling fast at or above list price and most likely in multiple offers. We're in a mixed market and it can be very, very tricky for buyers. One house can sit and get reduced again and again, while another house is being sold in multiple offers over asking. Add to the mixed market the fluctuation in interest rates and it can cause a lot of anxiety for buyers today. The best advice that I can give right now is to think long term. If you are planning on staying a while in your home and you can afford a loan right now, you you may be able to secure a great home because there is definitely less competition. As already stated, investors are buying nearly half as many homes as they were a year ago. In the fourth quarter of 2021, investors bought 89,396 homes in metropolitan areas tracked by Redfin. In the fourth quarter of 2022, investors only bought 48,445 homes in those same areas. Investor purchases were a big problem during the housing pandemic boom because individual buyers who are most likely getting a loan could not compete with those cash offers. But although investors have pulled back on buying homes, this doesn't necessarily mean that their market share has dropped since individual home buyers activity has also slowed way down. According to Redfin, investors share of the market in all metropolitan areas was 17.8% in the fourth quarter. That's comparable with 17.6% percent in the prior quarter and down from 19.4 percent a year earlier. This is according to a Redfin analysis of county records across 40 of the most populous U.S. metropolitan area. In dollar terms, investors bought $31 billion worth of homes in the fourth quarter, down 42.7 percent from $54.1 billion one year earlier and down 27.5 percent from 42.8 
$8 billion one quarter earlier. And to get even more specific, investor purchases of single family homes are down 50%, more than any other property type. The cities that are affected the most are the pandemic boom towns like Las Vegas and Phoenix. In Las Vegas, investor home purchases fell 67% in the fourth quarter compared to a year earlier, which Redfin's researchers found to be the largest decline out of all 40 metro areas they looked at. Investor purchases may also be declining in Atlanta, Charlotte, Las Vegas, and Phoenix because those markets were popular among iBuyer investors, many of whom have ceased or slowed operations in recent months. The reason it's important to look at these numbers is if investors start pulling back and try to offload their inventory at a fast pace before prices drop even more, this could accelerate the price declines in those cities where the investor share is high. This is good news for buyers because that means that prices will come down and homes will be more affordable. It's bad news for homeowners and buyers that bought a home during the pandemic boom because values will go down a lot faster than if investors were not involved. According to Redfin, during the four week period ending February 12th, median sale prices fell in 20 of the 50 most populous US metros with the biggest drops in Oakland, California down 9.3% year over year, Sacramento down 7.4%, Austin down 7.1%, Phoenix down 5.5%, and Detroit down 5.4% year over year. Prices increased most in Milwaukee, 13.6%, West Palm Beach, Florida, 11.2%, Miami, 9.9%, Columbus, Ohio, 9.6%, and Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 8.9%. The median asking price of newly listed homes was $378,118, up 1.2% year over year, the smallest increase since May of 2020. And the median home sale price was $346,725, up 1% year over year. So prices on a national level, in this case, Redfin looks at over 400 metro areas, are still up, even if only a little. Also on a national level, pending home sales were down 17.6% year over year, the smallest decline in over five months. So pending sales are improving, which does mean that buyer activity is improving, but I think that's kind of normal since we're entering the spring market. Among the 50 most populous US metros, pending sales fell the most in Las Vegas, down 57.6% year over year, Austin down 51.7%, Phoenix down 48.8%, Nashville down 47.4%, and Riverside, California down 46.8%. 0.7%. Pending sales actually rose in two metros, Chicago up 67.7% and Cincinnati up 30.2%. All this data just simply tells us that the places that actually boomed the most are also correcting the fastest. I hope this is making homes more affordable in those areas, but I think with the higher interest rates and still not a lot of inventory, that affordability is still going to be an issue. But what do you guys think? Do any of you guys live in any of the places that I've mentioned? If you do, please comment below, tell us where you live, and tell us what you're seeing. It is the best way that we can all really know what's happening in the housing market across our country. We are in such a mixed market that depending on where you live in our country, you could be having a completely different experience when it comes to the housing market. But one thing that we are all experiencing is higher interest rates, still too high inflation, and still very little inventory compared to pre-pandemic levels. This affordability crisis is far from over. I hope you got some value out of today's video. It's a lot of work making them and I know I threw a lot of numbers at you today, but sometimes it's good to look at the data to see where we are today and where we think we're going to go moving forward. If you did get some value out of today's video and you want to show our channel some support, definitely smash that like button, comment below, and consider subscribing to our channel. It just motivates us to make more videos. And if you want to see some different perspectives about our housing market, check out some of our other videos because they're all from different industry experts' perspectives, so it can give you pretty much the whole picture. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye.